Not so long ago, Sweden was one of Europe's poorer countries. Today, Sweden is among the world's richest countries, a shift that has occurred over a few hundred years through industrialization. But what is it that makes a region economically strong? How does it change over time? And is it possible to influence? It's these types of questions that economic historian Sherston Enflow devotes much of her time to. And she travels back in time into history to find the answers. I'm interested in the period from the 16th century until today. The 16th century is when Sweden was uh, formed as a nation and the precondition was starting to be laid for the rapid expansion that we then see in the 19th century. I want to understand what is happening in the 19th century and how Sweden could go from being one of the poorer countries in the European periphery to one of the richer countries in the world today. There are several factors that may be responsible for a region's growth such as natural resources, infrastructure, and a market. But how these factors interact with each other, and how economic strength changes over time, has been largely unexplored to date. What makes a regional economy stable or vulnerable, and if it can be controlled? I think history is important to understand the long-run processes that govern our society. Many of the debates that we currently face in politics have been present in the past. As historians, we can give perspectives to policymakers when they face big decisions. As a child, Sherston Enflow had already displayed a large and broad interest in social issues. And when the economic crisis hit Sweden in the 1990s, she felt she needed to understand economics to help her understand society. In the early 1990s, uh, I was 13 years old and there was talk everywhere about unemployment and a lack of growth prospects and I saw people losing their jobs. Uh, in the media I felt that economics was described as some kind of natural power, but I really wanted to understand what was going on in society and how economics could affect so many people's lives. After social sciences studies in economics, she discovered, to her surprise, that she was thinking a lot about statistics, and step by step, she came closer to her field of research. Now she works as an economic historian at the University of Lund. Here we have Tina, who is our institution secretary. Hello, Tina. Hey. And here is the corridor. Here sit all the researchers. We can say hey to Jason also, actually. He's my friend. Hi, Jason. I wanted to introduce you. Jason, also my PhD student. Yeah. <laughs> Love your board. <laughs> See you later. Okay. Hello, Mats. Hey, Mats. How are you? Hey, Mats. How are you? Good. 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 So what is it that Sherston is trying to accomplish with this? Well, it is actually nothing less than to understand the process that drives development in a region, based on information gathered from our history. Growth in every small town can be affected by key decisions made in Parliament. One very clear example of everything that Sherston has investigated is the effects of railroads. She went through cities in pairs. They resembled each other in the 1850s, but then one became connected with the state main railway while the other did not. Yeah, we look at the Swedish railroad network because we think that it constitutes a natural historical experiments. So as opposed to other countries where the railroads were built to connect the growing cities, actually the Swedish railroads were built a little bit as an exogenous shock. One example is Skara and Hovde, equally large in 1850, with Skara as a prominent city throughout history. But Skara did not get connected to the main line. Today, Hovde has almost three times as many inhabitants compared to Skara. 
But we see that those places that got access to rail in 1850s, that they are still today bigger than comparable towns in 1850. So that infrastructure investment 150 years ago delivered persistent effect on the Swedish economic geography. This shows that the regional economy can be influenced, for example, through infrastructure. Nils Eriksson, he was famous for having fear of waterways and cities. As a child, I always found that fascinating when reading about it in school. Like, why would you construct a railroad network without connecting the growing cities? And I think one of the reasons was that he thought of the places as, that had ports as always going to be superior anyway, and that he just wanted to even out the conditions. I don't think he foresaw how revolutionary the railroads were going to be, uh, and that he just wanted to give other places better access in relation to the port towns. Had they known then what we know today about the importance of the railways, decisions might have been made differently. Now, Sherston Enflo is gearing up with knowledge of historical processes so that today's politicians will be able to make better decisions with the major challenges that the 2000s bring, such as broadband networks, automation, self-propelled vehicles, climate and housing initiatives, so that communities can be able to get the right mix which will bring success.